Mr. Secretary, General S. Marlin, all of our distinguished guests on this occasion, I have been honored many times since assuming the office of Presidency of the United States, but I can say from my heart that today is the highest honor. The highest honor because I have the, for the first time, the privilege of representing the United States of America and presenting the Congressional Medal of Honor to two of our three of our fine young men who have fought for the cause of freedom and the cause of peace in Vietnam. The citations will be read by the Secretary of Army and they will tell us better than any words I could utter what these men have done beyond the call of duty. I would like to add just a personal word, a word that I think all of the American people would join me in. Uh, we really cannot honor these men, but they have honored America. They have added to the honor of the nation by what they have done. They share several things in common. They are men who risk their lives for their fellow men. They are men who face death, and instead of losing their courage, they gave courage to the men around them. And finally, they are young men. The oldest man is 30. And <laughs> I guess we can see <laughs> Sergeant Sasser is 30. And Sergeant Zabotowski is 26. And Specialist Sasser, or Specialist Hooper, is uh, 21. And that leads me to uh, give you a conclusion that I reached after studying all of the Congressional Medal of Honor winners in this war. Their average age is 27, which brings home a thought that we must always remember. When we think of America's younger generation, uh, we sometimes have a tendency to emphasize what's wrong with them. And sometimes uh, young people do get in trouble. Sometimes they do not follow the patterns that older people think they ought to follow. But in the magnificent records of these three young men, they've demonstrated to us that uh, we can be very proud of our younger generation. They are magnificent men, magnificent in their idealism. Idealism is often shown by words, but they have demonstrated their idealism by their deeds. And because they have made us proud of being Americans and also reminded us that we should be proud of our younger generation, the youth of America, I'm honored to be here with them. And now, Mr. Secretary, if you would read the citation. President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Sergeant First Class Fred W. Zabotowski, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Sergeant First Class Fred W. Zabotowski, United States Army, distinguished himself in the Republic of Vietnam on February 19, 1968 while serving as an assistant team leader of a nine-man Special Forces long-range reconnaissance patrol. Sergeant Zabotowski's patrol was operating deep within enemy-controlled territory when it was attacked by a numerically superior North Vietnamese Army unit. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Sergeant Zabotowski ordered his patrol to move to a landing zone for helicopter extraction while he covered their withdrawal with rifle fire and grenades. Rejoining the patrol under increasing enemy pressure, he continually moved from man to man, encouraging them and controlling their defensive fire. Mainly due to his example, the outnumbered patrol maintained its precarious position until the arrival of tactical air support and a helicopter extraction team. As the rescue helicopters arrived, the determined North Vietnamese pressed the, their attack. Sergeant Zabotowski repeatedly exposed himself to adjust helicopter gunship fire around the landing zone. After boarding one of the rescue helicopters, he positioned himself in the door, delivering fire on the enemy as the ship took off. The helicopter was engulfed in a hail of bullets, and Sergeant Zabotowski was thrown from the craft as it spun out of control and crashed. 
Recovering consciousness, he ignored his painful injuries and moved to the flaming wreckage. Heedless of the danger of exploding ordnance and fuel, he pulled the severely wounded pilot from the blaze and made repeated attempts to rescue his, patro his patrol members, but was driven back by the intense heat. Despite his own serious burns and crushed ribs, he carried and dragged the unconscious pilot through a curtain of enemy fire to within 10 feet of a hovering rescue helicopter before collapsing. Sergeant Jabotowski's extraordinary heroism and devotion to duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Joe R. Hooper, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Staff Sergeant Joe R. Hooper, United States Army, distinguished himself on February 21, 1968, while serving as a squad leader with Company D, 2nd Battalion, 501st Infantry, 101st Airborne Division, near Wei, Republic of Vietnam. Company D was assaulting a heavily defended enemy position along a riverbank when it encountered a withering hail of fire from rockets, machine guns, and automatic weapons. Staff Sergeant Hooper rallied several men and stormed across the river, overrunning several bunkers on the opposite shore. Thus inspired, the rest of the company moved to the attack. With utter disregard for his own safety, he moved out under the intense fire again and pulled back the wounded, moving them to safety. During this act, Staff Sergeant Hooper was seriously wounded, but he refused medical aid and single-handedly stormed three enemy bunkers, destroying them with hand grenades and rifle fire, and shot two enemy soldiers who had attacked and wounded the chaplain. At this point, he was attacked by a North Vietnamese officer, whom he fatally wounded with his bayonet. Finding his men under heavy fire from, from a house to the front, he proceeded to the building, killing its occupants with rifle fire and grenades. As his squad reached the final line of enemy resistance, it received fire from four bunkers in line on its left flank. Staff Sergeant Hooper gathered several hand grenades and raced down a small trench which ran the length of the bunker line, tossing grenades into each bunker as he passed by, killing all but two of the occupants. He then raced across an open field, still under enemy fire, to rescue a wounded man who was trapped in a trench. Upon reaching the man, he was faced by an armed enemy soldier whom he killed with a pistol. Staff Sergeant Hooper then established a final line and reorganized his men, not accepting treatment of his many wounds until this was accomplished. Staff Sergeant Hooper's actions were in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, in the United States Army. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Specialist 5, Clarence E. Sasser, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Specialist 5, Clarence E. Sasser, distinguished himself on January 10, 1968, while serving as a medical aid man with Company A, 3rd Battalion, 60th Infantry, 9th Infantry Division in the Republic of Vietnam. His company was making an air assault when suddenly it was taken under heavy small arms, recoilless rifle, machine gun, and rocket fire from well-fortified enemy positions on three sides of the landing zone. During the first few minutes, over 30 casualties were sustained. Without hesitation, Specialist Sasser ran across an open rice paddy through a hail of fire to assist the wounded. After helping one man to safety, he himself was painfully wounded in the left shoulder by fragments of an exploding rocket. Refusing medical attention, he ran through a barrage of rocket and automatic weapons fire to aid casualties of the initial attack, and after giving them urgently needed treatment, continued to, s 
to search for other wounded. Despite two additional wounds immobilizing his legs, he dragged himself through the mud toward another soldier a hundred meters away. Although in agonizing pain and faint from loss of blood, Specialist Sasser reached the man, treated him, and proceeded on to encourage another group of soldiers to crawl 200 meters to relatives safely. There he attended their wounds for five hours until they were evacuated. Specialist Sasser's conspicuous gallantry and extraordinary heroism are in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. I think we'd like to get a group picture if we could with the... Uh, why don't you get up this a little more balanced. Red light. <laughs> We're going to give them a little practice on TV. And then I think all of you would like to see their families. We'll have a picture with each one of the families. Could we do that? Fine. Could you bring your family up uh, first? Mm -hmm. some of you out, you know, you know what's happening. Now, let's see. There we are. I should tell you that this family is a California family, and uh, they live in... <laughs> and, uh, but on the other hand, they, uh, they also hail from Washington, the state of Washington. So we've got two states represented here. Because how do you feel being 30 and these other fellows so young? <laughs> This family is from New Jersey, uh, Trenton, New Jersey, right? Yes, sir. And uh, the, uh, your boy said that when he came in, that you, you tell him what you told me. He says, his teacher said, say hello. <laughs> He's going to go far with his teacher. <laughs> He's in the first grade. Now this family's from Texas, and uh, the uh, from just south of Houston, right in the Houston area. And you still live in Texas. And you're stationed on Fort Bragg. No, but Boy Belvoir. So we've covered the whole country here. <laughs> East, West, California. Yes. That concludes the ceremony. We thank you all very much for coming, and we are honored that you could be here to participate in this very historic ceremony. <laughs>